Hi everybody, it's that guy from Esoteric Music Machines, and today I'm going to, before your very eyes, show you how to patch the Gotham and Tiny Little Deformer to create a self-playing FM patch that's going to sound something like... something like this. <laughs> Something like that. So let's move to a new preset. Right here. What I'm gonna do is give you an overview of the interface. We're gonna set up three oscillators, one carry oscillator and two modulator oscillators. We're gonna set up their FM modulation. We're gonna set up the audio buses, buses. There are eight of them in this machine. So that we hear the carrier modulator, carrier oscillator, but we do not hear the two oscillators whose only function is going to be to modulate the frequency of the carrier oscillator. We're also going to use one or two of the 32 control voltage modulation sequencers and one or two of the 16 LFOs that are available in the machine to modulate the FM depth. And we're also going to set up note sequences on the carrier oscillator and also the modulator oscillator so that we're going to have a different timbre with every single note. Um, and then we're going to listen to the patch that we did. So the first thing I want to show you is a basic overview of the interface of this machine. Um, to work with a, to start building a patch, you click edit. And then you basically have one touch access to every single module in the sound engine. The sequencers, the sampler, you can save things on, uh, uh, you can save presets and restore them. You can store samples to the USB and um, do some other functions. You also always have a keyboard available to you on the screen. Um, you can use your finger. I'm using a stylus because it's a little more precise. The default initial patch is just one saw wave. There are 16 parts available to you. It's eight voice polyphonic. Um, right, so let's look at the oscillators first. That's what we're gonna set up first. You touch the oscillator, you are looking at slot two. I actually wanna work on slot one. In slot one, we're gonna place our carrier modulator. And then in slot two and three, we're gonna place modulators to modulate the frequency of the carrier oscillator. The default waveform is saw. For every single parameter, there are 512 potential values. Um, the way that this works, you see that there's four knobs and there's eight parameters. You're either editing the top row of four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or just by touching it, the bottom row. One, two, three, four. So the first thing we want to do, because I just want to work with sine waves, we're going to do very classic, elegant, chowning style, um, old school frequency, frequency modulation. So we want sine waves. So the way that I do that is take the third knob and it's going to give us a visual representation of each of these and wave zero is a sine wave. Now you're going to notice it doesn't look like a sine wave. So I'm going to have to ask myself, why not? Is something modulating it? That's an interesting question. There are these different, in the case of an oscillator, there's five different pages. Um, there's the basic parameters of the oscillator. There are different types of oscillators. If you pay a little bit of extra money, you've got a resonance oscillator, different percussion oscillators. You can make uh, metallic sounds, cymbals, hi-hats, um, clap noises. These are all different um, synthesis engines that are built in to enhance your drum and percussion based synthesis. We're not doing any of that. We're just taking type one um, sine oscillator. Now, we want to also set up oscillators two and three. How do we do that? We just hold down part and click two, three, 
for, and this is true for effects, filters, anything. That's how easy it is to change from one oscillator to another, one LFO to another, one sequencer to another. You just press part and the number. So to pick which module you're working with, you go to this screen and you just pick it. And then to pick which one you want to work with, if that's if you're not in the one you want to be, and it's always going to show you right here which one you're on, you just press part. So we've got a sine wave on slot one. We also want sine waves on slot two and three. They're all starting with the default saw. I'm in the wrong row. Here I go. Sine wave. It's a slightly twisted sine wave. I wonder why that is. And a three. Make it a sine wave. Let me just show you the LFOs while we're here. This is LFO one. You've got the rate. And it's going to show you in this thing fluctuating up and down the real-time fluctuation of this modulator. Also, we've got 512 different waveforms. Let me just give you a tour. These scatter into very fast moving. You can do FM with these LFOs. You can do very rapid modulation with these LFOs. Um, so what I'd like to do is have this kind of a rate to modulate the FM depth. And I want to modulate the rate of this LFO with LFO number two. So I'm going to show you what a broad range of modulators I have to choose from. There are keyboard aftertouch and velocity, multiple aftertouch bend if you have a pitch bend knob. 32 different control voltage sequencers, 16 different LFOs. Right now we're using LFO 1, that says right here, and I want to modulate it with LFO 2. Here's the modulation depth, like that. I can also modulate the waveform itself and the curve of the waveform. Let's go back. Now we're going to go to back to oscillator. The next thing I want to show you, so we've set up our oscillators. They all have sine waves. I think I'm going to drop the tuning of, LF, of our mm, carrier about an octave, 12 semitones. And I want to increase the modulation depth. So I select this row, turn it up to about here. And then under this page, select. So these are, I can modulate all these different parameters with modulators of my choosing. The select page lets me select whether this oscillator, which is the generic term for a sound source in any Gothamian instrument, you can have it be an oscillator, also a sample, a noise source with a lot of different module, uh, parameters. Chop key means take a sample, slice it across the keyboard, and then use the MIDI pitch values to play the different slices of the sample. I love to do that. And there's a very elegant, very easy to use um, sample slicer that can either sl slice your sample into however many evenly spaced slices or by detecting transients. Um, maybe I'll do that in another video. Uh, you can also have, still talking about the different uh, things that this can be, uh, crossfading between two, two different samples. So those are the different things an oscillator can do. We just want it to be an oscillator, but we want to choose the FM source. And you notice that's a bus. That's not an oscillator, that's a bus. So the next thing I want to show you is how you set up the eight different audio buses, which is an immensely powerful, flexible feature of this machine. It took me a little while to figure it out, but really it takes it into almost completely modular territory. Um, every audio bus has a sound source, then a digital filter if you want to use it, and then whatever effects you want to assign. And then you can determine whether that audio, that bus is going to go to the left speaker, the right speaker, left and right, or not be heard at all. So the first thing I want to do is just set this to two. And uh, while we're here, I'm just going to switch to 
oscillator two. Notice we go to the same page I was on and I want to set this one to FM bus three. So I'm going to have the module, the modulator on FM bus three modulating oscillator two and oscillator two modulating os the frequency of oscillator one. Uh, so let's first of all save this patch that we're developing. We're going to call it FM demo one. I could also have capital letters and punctuation. Save. There it is in my list now. Okay. Let's set up our audio buses. We go back into edit, we click the bus these are the eight different audio buses. You can see that by default, bus one is set up to go to both the left and right outputs, as you can hear. What I want to do is set up buses two and three so that they are silent. So I'm going to scroll through the options left, right, left and right. I can go to output effect one or output effect two. Again, I'm saving the effects for another video. And off. That means these oscillators are still gonna be running. They're still gonna be available as FM modulation sources, but um, we're not gonna hear them. I don't wanna hear them. I only wanna hear their impact on oscillator one. That's the meaning of a carrier oscillator as opposed to a, a meaning of a modulator oscillator as opposed to a carrier oscillator. You'll notice an extra option here at the end of bus three, which is I can route the output of bus three to bus four. Why would I want to do that? Because the buses are organized so that they have a digital filter or an audio filter, beautiful audio filters in this machine, and then whatever effects you assign. If that's not enough flexibility for you, you can route bus three into bus four and then have another filter and another series of effects. So that's a tremendous amount of flexibility there, even though this is not technically a modular synthesizer sampler. So we have set up, I'm going to back this off into, there we go. So that was the next step in our process. The next step is I want to assign my oscillators to their appropriate audio buses. Um, the way that I do that, it's just where this is located. It's in the VCA module. The VCA module for every one of the voices has an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope, and also a drone feature so that if you choose to, you can hear that oscillator all the time um, or not. And you can assign it to a bus. So it's very simple what we're going to do. We're assigning us to voice one to bus one, voice two to bus one. Everything by default is just assigned to bus one. Ooh, see that? That's exciting. Um, assign this to bus two. There. And then assign voice three, oscillator three, to bus three. So now, I'm just going to remind you by going back to the bus module, we're going to hear bus one, we are not going to hear bus two or bus three, and now we have assigned oscillator one to bus one, oscillator two to bus two, oscillator three to bus three. This is very simple. We could have done something much fancier, but we're not going to. The next thing that we're going to do is set up note sequences so that we hear something playing. Because if I make it play right now, it's not doing anything. So we're going to fix that. We go into our sequencer, note tracks. You've got 16 note tracks, one for each of the 16 parts. We're only doing three parts. Um, there's also control voltage tracks, 1 through 16 and 17 to 32. So, and they can all run at different uh, lengths. The, the default is 16, but uh, note track can go up to 64 steps. And you have a range of resolutions, that is the speed at which this sequencer is going to run. 
64th notes, 48th, 32nd, 24th, 16th, 12th, 8th notes, 6th, quarter notes, half notes. So you can have 16 note sequences and 32 control voltage sequences, all of which are running at different speeds and have different lengths, so that um, what you hear might never repeat at all, or it can repeat in whatever patterns you would like to see that happen. So I'm gonna set up for clarity and so that we can hear what's going on. The default, sorry, I changed the bar, length of 16. And the default resolution of 16th notes. Now, I could program this with a MIDI keyboard or, and I can also turn on, so these are the note values, I can turn on which notes are going to play. Not hearing anything, that's a little, oh, that's on note track three, that's why. Um, we're not listening to note track three. Uh, okay, let's stop that. You can also use what's called a template. So, okay, the sequencer has gate lengths that you can specify velocities that you can specify. Position is so intricate and interesting, I'm not even going to talk about it. It's too wonderful and complicated. Um, the template means that I can simply randomize. I can simply play forward. Watch what just happened. I just went back to a linear... I'm going to change the bar so you can see this whole sequence, which is like... There you go. Linear. Okay. And uh, what I like to do is just randomize it. So now I've got uh, all random positions, maybe not necessarily what I wanted. I've got all random note values, which I can also rewrite as I like to. So that's note track three, which is our second modulator. Let's switch to note track one, randomize these notes, random and random steps. There we go. Now it's black, but that means that they're turned on and they're going to play. Let's listen. Okay, that was a nice random melody I just threw out. We're going to do something else. We're going to also give a note sequence to this modulator. And I want you to listen to what happens when we do that. Because the modulator oscillator is going to be playing a different note for every note that the carrier modulator plays, the timbre is going to be different for every single note in this sequence. So let's listen. Now, wouldn't it be cool if that continually changed? In my world, that would be very cool. All we need to do to make that happen is give this sequencer track a different length than the first sequencer track. We just change this value to 15 or 17. Now let's listen. <laughs> Not super noticeable. Let's go back. We'll leave this playing and we're going to go back and play with the FM modulation depth in the oscillators. Let's um, go in and play with the beautiful 
analog filters that are available here. There's a lot of distortion. There's a lot of feedback that's available. I'm not going to be talking a lot. I'm just going to be showing you the modulation pages and setting up different kinds of modulation. First thing I'd like to do though, because it's always fun to have some already set up control voltage sequences. I'm going to set up how long? I think I'm going to make it Okay, 60 steps. You can have up to 128 with the control voltage ones. I'm going to randomize it. And I'm going to change the resolution to... Oh, I just changed the length. That's fine. Something slower. Eighth notes. Fine. So that's track one. That we've set up. I'm going to set up track two. So now I've got three nice randomized control voltage tracks. Let's go in and set up. We'll go back to our preset. And it's not playing yet. And I'm going to go into the voltage controlled filters. I'm going to turn on. Well, let's just get it started and I'll let you hear the wonderful impact these filters can have. Now, the G-Ray is a very mysterious, complex, fascinating feedback submodule within the Gotterman analog filters, of which this contains two, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it works. There's not a lot of information in the manual. I'm just going to show you some of what it can do. By the way, when this function key is lit, that means that each of these buttons will do what they say. Play, stop playing, record, stop recording. More a fantastic feature we're not going to talk about today. Switch between the lower and upper bank of um, parameters. Copy and paste, which you can do at any level. You can set up a whole voice, copy it, and paste it into another voice slot, saving and exiting. So we'll play. <laughs> Now, I hope you think that's as amazing as I think it is. It's kind of harsh, so we're going to use a digital filter as an after effect subsequent to this to sort of tame it just a little bit. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to use one of my control voltage sequences to modulate the cutoff of this second filter. Let me just show you the morph feature. So let me explain what's happening. Every aspect of every patch can have two layers, the base layer and a morph layer. And then this knob will interpolate continuously between the different values that you've set up in the sound engine for those two different layers. And then this knob will morph all of the sequencers from whatever you set up on the base layer to whatever you set up on the morph layer. Now, we did all of our work on the base layer. We never went into the morph layer. That means that the morph values are all default or zero or average or something. Yeah, they're just unwritten. So uh, this knob all the way over here is all the way into the base layer and all the way over to here is all the way into the morph layer. When you've done what we've done, which is only set up a patch on the base layer and not have anything on the morph layer, you're basically having your extreme values of your patch all the way over here, but then you have you can attenuate them all down to um, default values by turning it this way. So you have a tremendous range and you can morph independently, as I said, the sequencers and control voltage sequencers, as well as the entire sound engine. Uh, I just want to remind you, we're only using one oscillator modulated by two silent other oscillators. We're using three um, voices out of eight. We're using three parts out of 16 that we could have defined. And we're using three note sequences out of 16 and three out of 32 control voltage sequences. Let's hear some more. See, all of this morph stuff is one of my favorite things about this instrument uh, and any Gothraman instrument that has it because we get all of these tremendous, unexpected, unplanned, unanticipated variations for free. And if we had a set of values on the morph layer, we'd be morphing continuously in between those. You can set up completely different control voltage sequences, completely different LFO values, completely different note sequences, even with different note sequence lengths 
and resolutions. And as you turn the morph dial, somehow this machine is going to interpolate it and make it work. Uh, I intended this to be a video that would show you how quick and simple and easy it is to set up a note sequence modulation FM patch on this instrument. And it wound up being a demonstration of how easily and with how much pleasure and enjoyment you can get lost. And I also hope you really got a sense of how crazy the filters can be. Um, when I started exploring Eurorack and I got some filters that are highly regarded, they seemed incredibly boring and unmusical to me compared to the filters in this box. So let's hear a little bit more and just play us out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions or comments, please let me know in the comments. preset we just had, you just reload it. Thanks very much for watching.